Hi, my name is Raya Burbank, and I'm here to present for Sabimbo. Sabimbo does fair trade climate credits. This whole story started because my friend Johnny has a Jaguar in his backyard, and he started following it around with a video camera, and he stopped market trafficking, became an environmentalist and a vegetarian. And uh, I think you guys understand that if you start to study the outliers in our world, because the people who do things right, you can learn novel things that if you're just studying problems. So we started studying Johnny, and we were like, why did he do this? Just like all of his neighbors, I think we all wanted to know. Um, and so we decided after about a year, I realized, um, he did it because the Jaguar was beautiful, it was wild, and it was bigger than him. And that's the way that I feel about our project Sabimbo, because that's the way everybody at Sabimbo feels about our planet. We work in this patch of the Colombian Amazon. The Amazon is a big forest. It contains about 25% of the world's land carbon. And if we can't stop the deforestation, it's going to emit that into the atmosphere on top of the carbon that we already have there, which will be a planet killer. Pretty important problem. I'm here to talk to you today about our biodiversity credit because we think it's the best solution to stop deforestation. First, a little bit more about Sabimbo. Sabimbo was founded by three people. Johnny, who's former formerly worked for the World Wildlife Funds, me, I'm an MD technologist, and Fernando. Fernando is a third generation Colombian shaman. This is where we work. We work right on the border of deforestation, and we work on both sides of it. So on one side, we have indigenous small farmers with small plots of land, which have been mostly conserved by the farmers at an economic loss. And on the other side, we have large farming collectives or sometimes indigenous groups with big communal, communal plots of land that are completely preserved. We need different actions for different sides of the border, and we have to make both groups happy if we want to stop deforestation. We also work with about 18 indigenous groups across the Amazon, Colombia, Ecuador, Mexico, Venezuela, Brazil, and Peru, and more coming every day. We have leaders in Africa and Asia also interested in our solutions. The reason is we made a solution specifically from and for them. I'm going to talk a little bit about why the solution works from your perspective first. So first off, uh, if you're protecting primary forests through carbon, arguably there's a lot of debate about the science these days. Um, but even if all the science perfectly work, carbon will cost you about $100 per hectare per year for primary forest. Biodiversity, on the other hand, would cost you about $30 per hectare per year. And the locals would get four times more. So that presents 70% cost savings to the buyer and four times more for the locals. Why is that? Because biodiversity credits can be tracked and monitor with MRV from the locals themselves. Um, one of the biggest topics I have for COP28 is the biodiversity unit. So our unit is for conservation, but our unit actually interacts and plugs into any other unit on the market. The unit is an area-based unit for ecosystems, so one hectare of area. It's a value for the ecosystem. In other words, the planet-wide value of preserving it. So that's platinum, gold, silver, or bronze. If you're in an IUCN red zone, or a biodiversity hotspot, then your planetary value of your biodiversity is way higher than if you're in the middle of the Arctic tundra. No offense to the Arctic. Um, the last unit is integrity. What did you actually do? If you're a corporate, you could have taken the biodiversity down with an unintended impact. Um, or for us, we're trying to prove with our metric that we've preserved 100% primary ecosystem with total intactness. But some people are trying to raise the delta of their biodiversity. It really depends on your metric and methodology and what you're attempting to do. But you have to prove methodology. And the last thing is time. We split the time of the unit down to two months. That's because that's a price the market can understand. It doesn't necessarily mean that the methodology is going to take two months. It might take two years, but then you're just going to bucket up your two years into two, into two months. So instead of getting two credits, you would get 12. Um, one last thing about the value. So we took 14 schemas and flattened them all down into platinum, gold, silver, and bronze. That's IUCN, World Wildlife Fund, UNFAO, Holdridge, Ramsar, you name it. If somebody's categorized your ecosystem, you can then you can take that value and put it into these terms. So that helps markets adopt this credit faster. There are people using this credit, and Sarah Carbono is probably the first in the world to certify a biodiversity credit because of this unit and because of their standards, which is simple, interoperable, and easy to use. Sierra Carbono has a huge asset in that they automatically list with eco-registry, which is all over the world. They're super collaborative. We're already selling pre-sales on Dovim and Senkin, which will then certify with Sierra Carbono and list on eco-registry. And then after we certify, we'll be listing automatically on Expansive and any other exchange that wants to list with eco-registry. There are so many things to talk about with biodiversity, but I'm going to keep it simple. 
Our biodiversity credit works in any ecosystem on the planet. Yeah, marine, it works in jungle, it works in forest, desert, savanna, you name it, it works. And here's why. We're not replacing the ecosystem. We're not doing a metric specifically for the ecosystem. We're using the animals that, did, that evolved in that ecosystem to measure the biodiversity of that ecosystem. So the animal becomes your sensor. Um, the area of the animal, the home range of the animal, is automated into a circle. And it calculates, this is the range that the animal normally lives in. And their living ranges overlap to create a biodiversity credit, which is an area of protected land. So I'm going to walk you through that a bit slower. So first up, every ecosystem on Earth has a sentinel species, an animal that represents the integrity of the ecosystem. In our ecosystem, that's about 53 different species, and they have an integrity score to show how much they represent the ecosystem. The majority of them have an integrity score of one. Some of them are totemic, totemic animals. In other words, indigenous groups highly prize them, but, but the biodiversity science is a bit low on it, so they have an integrity score of five, 0 0.5. Then you get your data. Our methodology was written to accept any kind of data that's out there, but usually as long as it's primary data. So we accept video cameras, audio recordings, tagged animals, anything that can give you a geocode and a date timestamp for your animal. In our case, that's usually video cameras of jaguars. Um, then you calculate your data. So as I said before, each animal observed in the ecosystem that's a sentinel species has a home range. In other words, it has an area of land that it normally lives in. You can overlap those home ranges and then equalize them to show an area of protected forest. Our observations only last for two months because animals can't be assumed to be permanent. You have to keep finding the animal in order to keep getting credited. Here's an example of our data running over the last year in the Colombian Amazon. These are small farmers who protected their land and jaguars, harpy eagles, even a bush dog found in the jungle, representing that the jungle is intact and, in and, and integral. The best thing about biodiversity credits is that animals can show you a lot more than just carbon. Sure, you can overlay a carbon map and you can co correlate the difference, but animals can show you below canopy integrity, water health, soil health, noise pollution, and hunting drug behaviors. It tells you a lot more about a conserved ecosystem. I think it's really cool that we've done this biodiversity credit, but um, I think the coolest thing is that in the Amazon, there is not a lot of institutional funding. In other words, for people in the Amazon to get funding, they really have to go outside the borders of the Amazon and get people around the planet to care about it. The Amazon is one of nine planetary tipping points, and we've already crossed the six of them. If we can solve for this, if we can find a better way to measure ecosystems in the Amazon and incentivize conservation behavior at the small farmer level, we can stop the deforestation in its tracks this year. This is where we're working in the Colombian Amazon. This method applies to the Brazilian and the Ecuadorian Amazon just as easily. Here's some videos of our jaguar uh, collected, Johnny's jaguar, but actually now we're starting to get some friends. So we also have a jaguar from the Cofan in Ecuador um, across the border. You'll see him in a minute. Um, yeah, so these are, jaguars aren't our only animals that we track, but and we've noticed in the Amazon, they're one of the easiest ones to track because they're so indicative of primary forest. They're rare, sentinel, trafficked culturally significant, all the good stuff. Um, but we also do harpy eagle and bush dog, as I mentioned. Uh, I've talked to friends that are doing killer whales in the Arctic, people who are doing uh, blue whales and a birthing site. Um, we have people who are doing uh, rhinos in Africa. This methodology really works for anywhere that local people need to conserve animals and be incentivized to participate in animal conservation. I think if you have one takeaway from this presentation, I would like you to take away the fact that I think locals can produce more. The traditional eco ecological knowledge is more valuable in the Amazon. The people who live there know the best about how to conserve it, and incentivizing them through a biodiversity credit is one of the best ways to get direct payments for climate action because they can do the science themselves. Um, that's it. Follow us on TikTok for more Jaguars. <laughs>